For so many of us, we're more than a year into the pandemic and it's become somewhat of a new norm for us, but I still think we're all just as excited to get back to life as we used to know it. But in the meantime, it's important to be documenting this time that we're living in right now. And to talk a little bit more, let's bring in Corey Taylor. She's the Office and Activities Coordinator for the Greater West Bloomfield Historical Museum. Thank you again for being with us. Thank you for having me. It's always great talking to you. I know that uh, the museum over there, you have a new program going on, Collecting Memories. Mm -hmm. Tell us more about that. Yep, so, so that program was uh, born out of the, the pandemic, basically. Um, last May, we, a, a group of us got together and, and said, you know, we need to start documenting uh, the, the events that have been happening over the last couple of months. And at that point, we thought that it was only going to be a few months. We didn't anticipate, like everyone else, we didn't anticipate that it was going to be over a year. Um, but we, we started this campaign to uh, collect stories and memories and, and just document, you know, how the pandemic affected uh, the greater West Bloomfield area. And then that sort of morphed into an ongoing uh, campaign that we've been doing kind of monthly topics. Um, so they, they update every month um, just based on the season or the events that we're, we're having. Um, so, so I guess good things have come out of the pandemic, <laughs> at least. You know, and, and you know what, uh, Corey, too, because, you know, we look at this entire past year and it's been a roller coaster and there are some little things. Mm -hmm. Like I was at Target the other day mm -hmm. and, you know, the toilet paper was restocked. Mm -hmm. There were Clorox wipes on the shelf. Hand sanitizer was a plenty. And I was so excited. I took pictures. I was like, see, see, I mean, who knew that taking a, seeing a, you know, a sock shelf, the toilet paper could make us appreciate some of these things. So when we're looking at documenting this COVID-19 roller coaster ride, what types of things are you looking for? Well, you know, we're, we're looking for, for anything that, that people want to provide, but mostly stories and memories, um, you know, verbally or written, um, you know, either way. Uh, we're also looking for, um, you know, th those are the kinds of things that document people's experience. And that's kind of the, the non-tangible things that you, that we want to collect. Um, because most of our, most museums, almost all museums are, are made up of, of tangible artifacts, objects, um, but all of those objects tell a story. And as they get older, the, the non-tangible stories and memories that are connected to it and the people who are connected to them sometimes get lost. And that's what we're trying to avoid um, because you know, we, we can collect pictures of you know, uh, unstocked toilet paper shelves or you know, a mask here and there or signs about wearing masks or, or sanitizing or, or whatnot but that's not going to tell the whole story you know that tells kind of a, a little tiny chunk of, of the story and and we want to hear from from people who are working from home or who have to homeschool their children or have to work with their spouse for the first time you know because they're sharing an office space or you know people who adopted pets during the quarantine and and all of that um so so we're looking for for anything and everything you want to share <laughs> So with that, uh, we're talking with Corey Taylor. She's the Office and Activities Coordinator for the Greater West Bloomfield Historical Society. And uh, Corey, uh, this is a very unique time to be going through a pandemic because of the technology. And how is that impacting the stories that you collect? Because I do wonder <laughs> what it was like during the Spanish flu. Right. Uh, would we have reacted differently to this one, had that one been doc, you know, documented like you know, COVID nineteen is going to be documented. Yeah, that's that's an interesting point, and I've honestly uh, thought about that as well. Um, I've, you know, it, it's kind of the the technology that we have now kind of puts into perspective a lot of historical events, um, and I always think about um, well, not always, but I've I've thought about recently when the um, Notre Dame uh, or the in France uh, okay. had burned. And had that happened just 20 years ago, we wouldn't have been as connected as we were then. You know, that only happened, what, two years ago now? 
Um, and, and people were, were able to message their, their friends and family that were in France instantly to find out if they were okay, to find out if anything else happened, you know, so it's, it's a, a blessing and a curse, I think. Um, but I, I honestly think it's, it would have been, we might've been in a better place to, to adapt and to react to the pandemic had we known more about individual people's experiences during the Spanish flu um or not you know maybe, maybe we wouldn't have reacted any differently who knows but i i would i hope that had we known what had happened 100 years ago we would have reacted a bit differently <laughs> yeah, it's just the, the simple thing of wearing a mask mm -hmm. you know they were wearing a mask 100 yeah. years ago uh, years ago but it really took a lot of digging mm -hmm. to be able to try to even find um, information about right. what they were going through. And then it was very historical, more of a timeline rather than stories. So with that too, how's it been going? What types of stories have you been collecting and which ones do you wanna see more of? So, so we've actually um, been collecting uh, just, we have a few kind of ongoing submissions that a few, um, uh, active members and, and volunteers have been continuously adding to our collection, which we're greatly appreciative of. And, and those are, are basically, you know, one of our, our volunteers uh, golfs a lot. And so uh, she was submitting, uh, she submitted a, a mask that she got. And then she also submitted a, a sign that they had to put on their golf cart that all members of the cart come from the same family or live within the same household, which I, I thought was strange, but you know, needed obviously so that people weren't, you know, if you weren't wearing a mask in the golf cart together, people weren't concerned. Um, and, you know, I've been collecting the, the stickers that we got from our vaccines, you know, that have the time on them um, of when, you know, you can leave. And uh, so that, that's something, you know, it's just a label with a time on it, but that's extremely important to me. And, and it was when I, it, it's one of those like glimmer of hope you know, that, that maybe there's a light at the end of the tunnel of this crazy last year, 14 months. So, um, you know, th those are the kinds of things that we, we want to hear from just the, the seemingly random, you know, unimportant objects or stories or, or things, photographs um, that somebody a hundred years from now might not think is important, but we today, you know, obviously cherish, so. I remember around this time last year, uh, it was the big debate over uh, getting out in your yard. Mm -hmm. And, you know, some of the like Home Depot, they could be open, but their their garden areas couldn't be open. Then it was hard to get flowers because of the supply. Uh, you know, the whole supply chain mm -hmm. uh, throughout this pandemic has been fascinating to sit back and watch yeah. as well. So when people are looking at possibly donating things, what formats too are you looking for? Um, Written word is still better, you know, because okay. we don't know what the technology is going to be in the next 50, 75 years. Yeah. So, um, you know, written, written word, you can uh, submit them online or you can submit them, you know, uh, you know, physically written down uh, and mail it to the museum or, uh, you know, we can, um, you know, you can drop it off at the museum. There's nobody there to pick it up, but, uh, you know, you can leave it in the mailbox or, or on the front porch. Um, and, uh, but, you know, the, the easiest thing, I think, especially with everything going virtual, um, is just submitting it online or emailing me, um, which all of my, all of the contact information is on our website. Um, and, and there are submission links on there as well. Um, and so, you know, you don't have to necessarily write something down. You can submit a recording of your voice or you can submit a video recording, um, you know, whatever you feel comfortable with. Uh, you know, there, there was one submission that was a simple photograph with one sentence describing the photograph and, and that's fine too. Um, so whatever, in whatever way is, is comfortable for you, we can find a way to, to submit it. You mean someone actually printed? A photograph? Oh no, no. There was a when I, with our Google form, uh, they submitted a photograph. Uh, I think it was back in early April. Um, the photograph was taken. It was a, a, a her son and her parents. Um, they were on opposite sides of a window, oh. and it, they were you know seeing you know he wanted to see his grandparents, and it was just safer to not be indoors or outside or anything. So they just had the window closed, and it was. Honestly, for one sentence and one photograph, it was quite moving, you know, because I know the background of it. And so I'm 
uh, it was, it actually kind of brought tears to my eyes when I saw it. Um, it really is. And some of these um, reunions uh, between grandparents and grandkids yeah. have been very emotional yeah. uh, as well. And, you know, one thing, because we do look at technology and you wonder, um, because, I mean, you know, eight track tapes and even the original iPod. Uh, so many of those things are outdated. So that's one thing if you preserve these moments and these memories to be able to, um, you know, have access to them, you know, 10, 15, 20 years, 50 years down the road. Yeah, yeah we're, we're working on, um, you know, trying to not only preserve the physical objects that we have, but also preserve them digitally. And with everything, you know, changing their, you know, 10 years ago, you could save things on a, a CD and that was fine. But now obviously that's outdated and, you know, CDs can go bad, just like floppy disks and, and stuff. So, you know, we're, we're trying to, we do have floppy disks in our, our archive that we're trying to extract information from uh, and get them online uh, or, or digitally rather uh, stored in the cloud. And as of today, the cloud seems to be the best way to, to, you know, archive things, but, you know, who knows what's going to happen in five, 10 years. Um, so we're, we're trying to, to do what we can to get up to date and, and keep up to date. I forgot all about the uh, floppy disk. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, Corey Taylor with us here on the Mega Cash. She's the Office and Activities Coordinator for the Greater West Bloomfield Historical Society. And I do have to ask one of the most popular things that the Historical Society hosts, the tours to Apple Island. Is it going to happen this year? So yeah, we are going to be having um, virtual Apple Island tours. Uh, we took a break last year because we just, you know, we couldn't get enough together to, you know, obviously it wasn't safe to go to the island in person, but then also we just couldn't get everything together to have a virtual tour, which, you know, to have a, a, an Apple Island tour skip a year is, is kind of a big deal because that's our biggest event and we have a lot of volunteers that are involved in it. Um, and, and obviously the community loves it too. So um, it, was a, it was a huge bummer to not have it last year, but we are having it this year. Um, it will be virtual and it will be free. Um, so that's really exciting. Um, and we're going to be having um, uh, in September for our, the 50th anniversary of when the school district uh, acquired Apple Island, um, one of our volunteers created a, a, about a 25 minute virtual tour of the island um, with some historical background and um, past and present photographs. Um, so we're going to be showing that. And then we're also going to have um, some recordings from our regular docents. Um, and presenters, so that's really exciting. Um, and, and so we're gonna have two sessions on, uh, it's in the second weekend in June, so that'd be June 12th and 13th. Um, and we have two sessions each. So uh, one will be in the morning and one will be in the afternoon. And uh, Corey, with that, um, you said that's going to be taking place in September? Oh, sorry. No, the the vir the uh, the video was produced in September. The the uh, virtual tours is uh, going to be in June, in the okay. second weekend in June. Yeah. And of course, uh, people can get more information if they go on the website. I would imagine. Yep. So it's right on our homepage. Uh, there's uh, four different links for whatever session you want to attend. Um, and the the morning is at 10 a.m. and the afternoon sessions are at 1 p.m. Uh, with us right now, Corey Taylor from the Greater West Bloomfield Historical Society. Uh, anything else going on over there at the uh, Historical Society you want to talk about before we say goodbye? Sure. Um, we actually have a, a presentation um, that uh, Civic Center TV produced for us. Uh, it's going to be occurring next Wednesday, May 19th at 7 p.m. Uh, so we're going to show it's about a 45 minute video um, that uh, CCTV produced in 2019 with our um, one of our Native American presenters, uh, Maquan Don Jewell. Uh, we, we wanted to capture, he, he knows a lot of, of information about the history um, of um, Native Americans in Apple Island and Native Americans in the greater West Bloomfield area. So we, we wanted to capture that, that knowledge and that, um, those stories from him. So, so we, we did a video a couple years ago that we were going to, to premiere in 2020, but then postponed it um, for the pandemic. So that's gonna be premiering on Wednesday. And we're, um, we're going to be showing the video uh, for the first time in conjunction with West Bloomfield Public Library. Um, so you can go to their website and register for the program. You do need a West Bloomfield Library card to register, um, but anybody can get a library card. And um, so you just need to contact them 
uh, to get that set up. Um, and, and you, as far as I know, uh, we're, we're still working out um, broadcasting the, the video with CCTV. Um, so that's tentatively scheduled, but we haven't quite worked out all the logistics with that. So at the very least, you can attend the West Bloomfield uh, program or the library program on Wednesday. And then, um, and then there will be a, a question and answer portion towards the end of the program with McQuandon um, after the video. So all of you over at the Historical Society, you have not taken a break during this entire time. Well, we, we took a couple months off uh, at the very beginning, um, you know, because we, we didn't realize that uh, things were going to last this long. So we, we hadn't quite had a, a virtual program backup plan. Um, we didn't know we needed it. Uh, and so we, we spent a few months uh, getting one together and, and launched that in August. Um, and we're just continuing with that as long as we need to. Um, everything that we've, we've been able to do, we've been fortunate enough to pivot to virtual. So we'll just be doing that for the foreseeable future. It really is fascinating um, to see how it's being documented as we continue to live throughout this time. Just think about the kids 50, 75 years from now. And you're talking about it. Yeah, I remember back in that time where we had COVID, they're going to look at us like we were all crazy, uh, you know, but it's going to be great. And we're so lucky to have your organization documenting this for uh, the history here in our community. So again, uh, how can people um, participate if they do want to document something, Corey? Just email oh. it to you. Yeah, so you can email it to me. Uh, it's all lowercase c-o-r-y at gwbhs.org. Uh, so that's my email address. Uh, you can also visit our website at gwbhs.org. Um, and all the links that you'll need are on, on the website, um, including all the event Zoom links. Um, those are right on the homepage. You're listening to 89.3 WBLD Orchard Lake, 88.1 WBFH Bloomfield Hills. Corey, always great having you with us. Thank you for your time today. Thank you for having me.